On this Sunday, April the 10th, we welcome you to our service of worship on this Palm Sunday morning. To all of you who are here with us this morning, and to those who are joining us online, we extend a warm welcome to you all. Here we are, our Lenten journey has brought us to the beginning of Holy Week. Today we celebrate what's known as Palm Sunday. It's also Passion Sunday. It helps us continue our journey on to Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and Easter Sunday celebration, which is next week. I hope that you will take time this week to share in the, the journey that we make as we make our way to the celebration of Easter next Sunday. A couple of announcements to share with you this morning. Um, we want to extend some thanks to some hardworking folks on the board of managers, those who've been responsible for the new carpeting that's been laid this past week. Not here, not here in, in, in the sanctuary, but out there in the North X, there's beautiful new carpeting. You probably didn't even notice it because it looks so much like the other carpet, but it doesn't have those ripples anymore. It's nice and flat and safe. So we thank the board of managers for that. Plus the, um, the polishing of the brass up here around this area, all the brass has been cleaned and it's shiny and looking wonderful thanks to some hard work. Also the work that was done in the minister's study with the painting of the walls and the new flooring that was laid. Thanks to all of you who've been part of that particular project. <coughs> Your work is appreciated want to mention to you that the Sunday School lessons are online today and on Good Friday and another for Easter Sunday. So if you know anyone who is interested, please pass that along. There are a number of families that are using those Sunday School lessons and we thank those who are responsible for making those happen. Our Lenten study on the Lord's Prayer will continue on Wednesday. This is our session number five, and uh, we have one more session after this one, and we'll conclude our journey with the Lord's Prayer. We've really enjoyed uh, the, the study, the discussion that we've had so far. Those of you who are using um, the book that you're reading along on your own, uh, we want to extend uh, an opportunity for you to see the DVD, because I think that that will be a big help to you as well. So we'll, when we're finished with it, we'll pass it along to those who haven't seen it yet. Also on uh, Friday, there will be a Good Friday service here at 1030 in the morning, and you're in, invited to come and share in that time of worship. And I think the other announcement I have for this morning is that there is perking after church this morning. Yes. And we look forward to uh, getting together downstairs for some conversation, some tea or coffee or cookies or whatever, um, and having a time to share with one another. We call perking um, that time, but it's more than coffee being perked, a lot more than that. There's uh, relationships and friendships perking as well. Perfect word for, for that happening. So today is Palm Sunday, and you have perhaps picked up a palm when you came in. Some of you have, and I'm going to talk more about the palms in just a few moments. But first, we're going to light the Christ candle to remind us that God has given us a light to help us find our way. We find that in the light of the world who is Christ. And so I light the candle this morning. Thanks be to God for the light that helps us find our way always. Let us join together in our call to worship. During Lent, we remember that when life seems to change direction, God is offering a new way of being. Jesus entered Jerusalem on a donkey as the Messiah. Instead of entering triumphantly as a victorious king, he came humbly offering peace, 
the crowd would change from shouting Hosanna to crucify. They hoped that the Messiah would come to defeat the Romans. But Jesus came to defeat sin and death itself. Let us pray. Holy One, blessed are you, for you come among us offering new life. We recognize that we can be blinded by our expectations and are too often unwilling to see your different and better ways. Open us to the truth that there is more to your reality than we can see or understand. In the name of Christ, who is able to accomplish far more than we can ask or imagine. Amen. Let us join to sing a lively welcome to Palm Sunday, hymn 215, filled with excitement. And if you feel like you should dance with this one, that's just fine. That's what you need to do, filled with excitement. Let us come before God in prayer. Holy God, source, savior, and spirit of all life, holy three and holy one. In you, we confront the mystery of mercy and the courage of compassion. As we face the cross on which Christ gave himself, we confront your willingness to die for us so that we might find new life as the Spirit speaks to us through the story of your amazing love. Spilled out in the blood of Christ, our hearts are moved to praise you. Words cannot express our awe, the grief and the gratitude stirring within us for all you have given us and for all you will give us through such unspeakable love. We fall silent in wonder and in praise. Holy God, merciful God, filled with wonder and praise, we acknowledge to you how often we fall short of our purposes for, for us, of your purposes for us. And we confess that it's easier for us to follow the crowd than to follow Christ. We prefer to avoid conflict rather than to stand up for your mercy and understanding. We allow strident voices in our times to drown out your wisdom and your truth. Forgive us, Lord God. Fill us with the courage to take up our cross and to follow Jesus. Even when the cost to follow is so high and reputations are at stake, 
for we pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. The Apostle Paul wrote, The saying is sure, and it's worthy of our full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. It doesn't matter how big or how small our sins are. God's forgiving love in Jesus Christ can cover them all. Trust in that truth. In Christ, we are forgiven. So be at peace with God, with yourself, and with one another. Let us stand and share the peace of Christ with one another. Peace before us. Peace behind us. Peace under our feet. Peace within us. Peace over us. Let all around us be peace. The peace of Christ be with you and with you and with you and with all of you. Peace. Peace. I'm going to call on our music team now to share with us a special gift of music. Well, this is Palm Sunday and Passion Sunday. Ultimately, it leads us to the Garden of Gethsemane, the days ahead. What we do today is leading us on a journey to Gethsemane. What happens there and then leading us on to Easter. So this morning we hear the story of Gethsemane. And we thank our music team. Jesus climbed the hill to the garden still. His steps were heavy and slow. A love and a prayer took him there to the place only he could go. Yes, Thank you. We are blessed. 
we are reminded that we're on our way to Gethsemane to go with Jesus on this journey in this Holy Week. But this journey begins in a different place. On the outside of Jerusalem long ago, Jesus arrived at the gates, waiting alongside were excited people, and they were expecting a king. How many of you have been to a parade? Have you ever seen these at a parade? No. It must be a different kind of parade for sure, right? These are palm branches. And the Bible tells us this parade was a different kind of parade. The song we sang a few moments ago, and in our call to worship as well, you might have picked up some clues about the difference in this parade. There were some words that we wouldn't hear in a parade that we've ever been at. Have you ever heard Hosanna? Oh, I don't think I've been in a Hosanna parade. Unless it was on Palm Sunday, then I've heard Hosanna. And it means, anybody know what Hosanna means? Save us, or praise be to God. So the people were expecting something pretty important in this person. Now the person they were awaiting was someone they'd heard about. They might have heard about him teaching people about God's love or about the way he helped people. But they knew something about him, and they wanted to say, Hosanna, you are the one we've been waiting for. They wanted to welcome him into Jerusalem. Actually, they thought he was going to be a king. But what kind of a king asks to ride on a donkey? Have you ever seen a donkey at a parade? Well, maybe. If it was an agricultural parade or something like that, there might have been a donkey. Have you ever seen a horse at a parade? No. I have. I've, I've seen horses pulling a, a wagon. And that's what they were probably expecting, that the king would come on a horse, because that's what kings did. But these people are seeing something different. This king is coming on a donkey. But they know he's somebody special, and they're excited, they're happy, they are full of questions, but they are pretty sure this is the one who's come for them to be their king. He is the one that God is bringing to them. And so, with happiness in their hearts, they are singing, Hosanna, Hosanna, waving their palm branches. And they do something very special that they always did for kings, those things like waving palm branches were part of it. But they also put their coats down on the ground so that he was welcomed by their very coats. They were welcoming this new king in a new way. It was a different kind of a parade. We know different things about that parade because... We read it in the Bible all these years later. We know what was happening there. We know that parade was going to go somewhere else. Something sad was going to happen, and their happiness would go away. So this parade was a mixture of happiness, and sadness was just around the corner. We know those things, but they didn't. And so on this day, we read how they welcomed Jesus as their king. They thank God that God had sent them a new king who was going to do new things for them and help them to live in God's way. So today I want to say to all of us, sometimes when we're in the middle of something, Something else can happen. For instance, we've been wearing masks for a long time, and then we're told, 
it's okay to take them off. And that can feel kind of, well, different. It's a time of change, isn't it? How do we feel? Kind of uncertain, kind of scared and frightened. And who do we turn to when we are feeling that way? To someone that we love, who will help us take away the scariness, who can say, well, maybe it's a good time to wear your mask still for a while. Maybe it's okay that we still be careful. That's okay. So there's the helpers in our lives, the people that love us. And there's another helper in our life. We know that God has helped us in the past. The people in the Palm Sunday parade, they knew about God's love too. And so we can turn also to God who loves us. Even when things feel really exciting and happy, sometimes they can be scary too. Times of change can be scary. So remember those who can help us through the changing times, those things that we maybe aren't too sure about. God is with us. Thanks be to God. And we have one another. And through one another, we come to know that love. Hosanna, Hosanna. Those are the words for today. Soon enough, there'll be other words. But today, we're going to say Hosanna. This is the Hosanna Parade Day. So would you like to take your palm for a moment and just say with me, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. Welcome to the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna. There goes my mask and the pins. Our responsive reading this morning is from Psalm 118, a portion of it. I just forgot to, to mention something. As you're listening to the service today, every time you hear me say Hosanna, I want you to wave your palm and say Hosanna too. Now, I didn't add a lot of extra Hosannas today. So you'll have to listen hard to when I do, okay? Let us read responsively and give thanks to the Lord for his good. His love endures forever. Open for me the gates of the righteous. I will enter and give thanks to the Lord. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. Stone of the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done this, and it is marvelous in our eyes. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord, we bless you. The Lord is God, and he has made his light shine on us. With bows in hand, join in the festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. Amen. Our gospel reading today is um, the account of that first Palm Sunday as we find in the Gospel of Luke. Reading in chapter 19, verses 28 to 40. Jesus had been teaching, and when he finished, this is what he said. He went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. When he had come near Bethphage and Bethany, at the place called the Mount of Olives, he sent two of the disciples, saying, Go into the village ahead of you, and as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden untie it and bring it here and if anyone asks you why are you untying it just say this the lord needs it 
So those who were sent departed and found it as he had told them. And as they were untying the colt, its owners asked them, Why are you untying the colt? And they said, The Lord needs it. Then they brought it to Jesus, and after throwing their cloaks on the colt, they set Jesus on it. As he rode along, people kept spreading their cloaks on the road. As he was now approaching the path down from the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Some of the Pharisees in the crowd said to him, Teacher, order your disciples to stop. And he answered, I tell you, if these were silent, the stones themselves would shout out. Amen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Our Hosanna song. Time for these. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, 218. Hosanna, loud Hosanna, the little children sang through pillared court and temple, the joyful anthem rang to Jesus who had held them close, Lord, hold it to his breast, the children sang their Thanks. That was a good job in waving your palm branches this morning. <coughs> Our Lenten journey has brought us to this Palm Sunday. And in keeping with tradition, we use these palm branches to remember Jesus' entry into Jerusalem. And we know the crowds saying, Hosanna, and greeted him as the king. I'll let you do it from now on, okay? You wave your palm branches. They shouted praise, and they laid their cloaks along his path and waved those palm branches. Hosanna, Hosanna. Some congregations hold a procession, a regular kind of parade, and in this way they become the parade for others to see. Sometimes there's someone dressed as Jesus and riding on a donkey. It can be a dramatic reminder of that parade into Jerusalem long ago. It can be a moment for us to witness our faith in Christ through our hosannas 
and palm waving parade. Try as we might, I expect our enthusiasm doesn't measure up to that original parade so long ago. We are not as enthusiastic as that parade when Jesus went up to Jerusalem. We hesitate to really get into the spirit. Children, on the other hand, have a way of embracing the palm waving and the Hosanna enthusiasm. I always appreciated when children remained in the service on Palm Sunday. I often assigned the children the task of listening for and responding to each Hosanna they heard by waving their palms and shouting, Hosanna! Children bring excitement to the moment. The joyous expectation that something special is about to happen. Children catch the spirit of anticipation, sometimes a lot more than us adults do, and bring our parade to life. Think about the parades you've been to. Mostly, we stand on the sidelines as passive observers. We take our children or grandchildren to parades, to see the parade, to experience the excitement. But the parade into Jerusalem was not passive. The emotions were high, and excitement hung in the air. It wasn't just children singing, shouting Hosanna, waving palms, and dancing as Jesus arrived. It was a moment filled with possibility, a sense of what might be for all those who welcomed Jesus. Might this be the king who would free them from the cruel Romans? Might this be the Messiah who would bring about a new day of blessing? What was this moment all about? Was God's kingdom about to be established on earth? Was this the long hoped for turning moment? a moment so filled with anticipation and excitement that Jesus cried out, even if these people were silenced, the very stones would shout out. In the Gospel of Luke, this scene is the high point of the story. The drama has been building for many chapters. Jesus has been traveling around the countryside, bringing good news to the poor, letting the oppressed go free, and proclaiming the year of the Lord's favor. Many have heard his teaching. They've experienced his power, or at least heard about his wonders. He's been on his way to Jerusalem for a long time now, and now he's arriving at the place where he will make a difference. And the people are looking forward to Jesus' arrival. No, they don't understand at all. But they're ready for something new. He's the one who will lead the people of Israel to freedom. He's about to deal with the Romans. He's about to be the Messiah. He's going to be the king. The story in Luke has an emphasis on Jesus' kingship. Luke tells the story about Jesus healing a blind beggar near Jericho. And then we hear the man calling out to Jesus, and he calls him the son of David, a title fit for a king. And then there's the parable about a nobleman going to a new country with the desire to take over and to become king himself. The man is greedy vengeful, and he takes advantage of his slaves, getting rid of those who do not embrace him as king. That story is a contrast to what happens in the next chapter. The coming of the kingdom of God is quite different from the typical pattern of the establishment of a political kingdom. The greedy and the vengeful king is the exact opposite for Jesus as he enters Jerusalem as the king who comes in the name of the Lord. This theme of royalty is, continuing, is continued in the Gospel of Luke as Jesus enters into Jerusalem. 
the people welcome him as king, a title that Luke adds to those words from Psalm 118, verse 26. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Processions such as these would be a familiar ceremony in the first century long ago. A long list of kings and conquering generals had entered Jerusalem over the years, and their welcome would be similar to the welcome that Jesus received that day. The people serve to escort the ruler. There would be proclamations. There would be the singing of psalms and hymns. There would be special ceremonies such as a sacrifice in the temple where the ruler accepted his authority. The historian Josephus described Alexander the Great entering into Jerusalem in this way. Then all the Jews together greeted Alexander with one voice, and they surrounded him. Then he gave his hand to the high priest, and with the Jews running along beside him, he entered the city. Then he went up to the temple where he sacrificed to God under the direction of the high priest. Jesus' entrance into Jerusalem follows this same pattern. Crowds of people met and escorted him into the city. They call out words of greeting and welcome. Hosanna! Hosanna! They spread their cloaks on the pathway. That's exactly what the people of Israel did when Elisha anointed Yehu to be their king and a clear sign of his royalty. So there's connections. This parade fits in with the history and tradition. And so in keeping with tradition, Jesus goes up to the temple where he weeps over the fate of Jerusalem. And he declares that the temple, the temple itself will be destroyed and he drives the crooked merchants from the temple area. The difference about Jesus' entrance is that he rides on a humble donkey. A conquering ruler would arrive on a great war horse. But Jesus is riding on a colt, the foal of a donkey. We read how Jesus prepared for his entrance, sending two disciples to bring a donkey for his use. They must have thought, where, where is this leading? What is he thinking? Why are we being asked to do this? Luke wants us to understand that Jesus is aware of the events that await his arrival. All is unfolding according to God's purpose. The donkey is also an allusion to a text from the prophet Zechariah. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout aloud, O daughter of Jerusalem. Lo, your king comes to you, triumphant and victorious is he, humble and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus is arriving in humility. Jesus will be a bringer of peace. He is no warrior king. Years before, Solomon also rode a donkey before he was crowned king. Jesus is the anointed one who will bring a kingdom of peace. From Luke's story, it's clear that the people see Jesus as a king, but he was a king, a different kind of king. He didn't come with marching armies. He wasn't a conquering ruler coming to overthrow the Roman Empire. He was not the usual king of a city. Rather, he was the king of fishermen and tax collectors and Samaritans, prostitutes, blind men, and cripples. That's the kind of king Jesus was. The cloaks thrown on the ground were not grand garments, but the simple dusty rags of ordinary folks. Jesus was the king of the oppressed and the suffering. So as Jesus entered Jerusalem that day, God was about to do something powerful and wonderful. But the disciples and the people in the crowd were not yet 
looking for a different kind of king. They were unable to imagine Jesus' kind of kingdom. They were still looking for a political ruler. They were waiting for freedom from the Romans. God had something different in mind. Hosanna, Hosanna. In the days ahead, according to Luke's story, those who cheered for Jesus as he entered the city, well, they quickly turned away from him. The Hosannas turned to other words. Jesus, he would be arrested and tortured and killed. Killed on a cross like a criminal. He hardly seemed the king that they'd been hoping for. Following his death, some of his followers were heading home, disappointed and confused, and they were heard to say, we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. They still didn't understand how different Jesus' kingdom, kingship and Jesus' kingdom was. They didn't realize that in everything Jesus did, he was, in fact, redeeming Israel. No, he didn't overthrow the Roman Empire. He didn't conquer the enemies of Israel and gain power and prestige for his people. But he redeemed Israel and all people for all time by turning us back to God. He showed us in his life and teaching that God cares for the least and the lost. He drove the merchants out of the temple and made God's house into a place of prayer for all people. When he was hanging on a cross dying, he prayed asking God to forgive them for they don't know what they are doing. He showed us with his life and death how to live for others. When people chose to follow in his way and live by his example, he truly was their king. And his kingdom began to grow and to flourish. In the days that followed, Jesus' disciples were confused. They had expected something else, and they were disappointed. They had hoped for a redeemer, and then Jesus died. What they would soon learn, what the community knew, was that Jesus was the king. He was the king who comes in the name of the Lord. He comes to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. He doesn't come on a war horse or with a sword in his hand, but he is victorious. Hosanna. Because he proves to all the world that goodness is stronger than evil, that love is stronger than hatred, that light is stronger than any form of darkness, life is stronger than death itself. Though he was dead, he is risen. And he is king, our king. May we praise God joyfully with a loud voice for all the deeds of power that we have seen. And may we watch with excitement and with anticipation for the wonderful things that God is going to do in and through us who call him king. And may God's kingdom Come in all its fullness. Thanks be to God. Amen. On this Sunday, we remember that Christ faced down his critics, looked danger right in the eye, and gave up his life on a cross for us. Now it's our turn to find the courage to give up something in gratitude for all he gave. Let us present our offering to God with grateful hearts. <laughs>
gracious God, when we look at what you have done for us in Jesus Christ, our offering seems so small. Yet the story of Jesus tells us five loaves and two fish can feed a multitude. And a man condemned to death on a cross becomes living bread for a hungry world. Accept the gifts we offer you today and use them to ensure that Jesus' story will be told for generations to come. Amen. Please take your palm branches home with you today and put them somewhere where you're reminded throughout this week as you see them. And if you haven't got one now, there's some to take with you. And thanks, Deb, for getting those for us. Um, put it somewhere where you're remembering that we've been in the Palm Sunday Parade, but this palm is taking us somewhere else. And every time you see it, remember that this is part of our journey in this holy week on our way to Easter. This morning, as we come to the prayers of the people, we continue to keep in our hearts and minds the people of Ukraine, indeed all of the people of Europe, and all those who are suffering in such horrendous ways that we can't even imagine. Please know also that as a denomination, the Presbyterian Church in Canada, along with many other denominations are already responding in various ways to bring help uh, and assistance to those in the midst of such horrendous suffering. If you wish to give through your offering envelope, you can um, um, mark your envelope with a gift to Presbyterian World Service and Development, and you may also send it to the Canadian Food Grains Bank, or you may be giving it to another form of mission. But there are many ways in which we can help. And please know that um, I believe on Sunday, April the 24th, there will be an opportunity here in Walkerton. I'm trusting this will happen. We are looking at the possibility of joining with our Ukrainian brothers and sisters as the bells are going to be rung in all of the churches across our community at 12 o'clock on that day. That is the day that the Ukrainian Orthodox Church celebrates their Easter. And it will be a sign of solidarity um, for us to be with them and to remind us all of the gift of Easter and the triumph of life over death that Easter brings. Let us join in prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, you came to us in humility, reaching out to all God's little ones with mercy and with compassion. You ask us to do the same. So today, we pray for all those who find themselves in humble circumstances for the homeless in our communities, and for refugees wherever they take shelter, for the poor and all who find themselves without resources to cope in these difficult days. We pray for those who live in isolated communities in Canada and around the world, those who are lacking access to care, to resources and technology, those things which so many of us take for granted. Strengthen them in your mercy and humble us, lest we forget how much we have to be grateful for. Lord Jesus Christ, hear us as we pray for all those who have been humbled by life's experiences, unexpected turns during the months of the pandemic. 
We remember before you those who face illness, pain or injury, those who have known death or disaster, failure or fear, and all who struggle with anxiety and uncertainty. We pray for victims of crime, those who suffer through the misjudgment or mistake of others. We pray also for those who suffer because of the consequences of their own actions and choices. And we pray especially for all whose lives have been torn apart in senseless and brutal acts of war. We pray for the loved ones left with unimaginable pain and loss. Embrace all these in your mercy and humble us, lest we imagine we can live lives untouched by trouble. Lord Jesus Christ, hear us as we pray for those who have not learned the lessons of humility yet. For those who live carelessly or drive recklessly, endangering themselves and others for those who abuse the trust and the power in their positions, betraying those whose interests are in their hands. And we pray for those who mislead others for gain or indulge their fame with no thought for the example they set. Humble them in your mercy and humble us if we are tempted to ignore the consequences of our own actions. Lord Jesus Christ, as we watch you walk to your cross this week, fill us with humble gratitude that you go before us into any challenge or crisis that we may ever face. Give us courage to stand with others facing injustice or prejudice, and give us words to speak out for those at risk at home or abroad. For you have given us words to pray for the coming of your kingdom, your reign of justice, your mercy and peace. And so we pray together, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our concluding and departing hymn this morning, 217, Ride on, ride on in majesty, ride on into this holy week as we go with Jesus on his way to Friday and to Sunday, Easter morning. Right on, right on in majesty, our call the tribes, Hosanna cry. O Savior, meek pursue thy road with palms and scattered garments strewed. Ride on, ride on in majesty, in lowly pomp, ride on to die. O Christ, thy triumphs now begin, our captive death and conquered sin. Ride on, ride on in majesty, Angel hosts beyond the sky. Look down with sad and wondering eyes to see the approaching sacrifice. Ride on, ride on in majesty. The last and fiercest strife is nigh. Thy Father. Anointed Son. Ride on, ride on in majesty.
us leave with a holy silence as our companion so that we may hear the whispers of all who have been forgotten except by God. Let us leave with service as our teacher so we learn the art of compassion from Jesus to bring healing and hope to everyone we meet. Let us leave with surprise as our guide so we may be open to the promises the Spirit speaks in the moment of our utter grief and loss. God's blessing be with us all.